Hi class, I uh, wanted to do a quick little review here of the uh, liver enzymes since we were talking this week about the liver chapter. I'm going to go back over our um, lesson from earlier on the enzymes and just hit up the liver enzymes. So uh, the first ones we'll talk about are our amino transferases, which transfer amino acids. So those two are AST and ALT. And um, they are both found in all major organs, so heart, liver, and skeletal muscles. Um, but, um, and kidney, sorry, also, but the difference is AST, um, so AST is in heart, liver, skeletal muscle, kidney, uh, is found in the cytoplasm and in the mitochondria, uh, of those cells, of the heart cell, of the liver cell, of the skeletal muscle cell, and the kidney cell, uh, but, um, ALT is in the cytoplasm only, not in the mitochondria. So the cell would have to be, you know, um, ruptured for both of those to be released. But AST also uh, would indicate damage to the mitochondria. Um, so, um, and it's really ALT is liver and kidney. It, um, it is not, uh, although they are both found in all major organs, um, AST tends to be elevated in more instances. So again, if you would have uh, a skeletal muscle injury, um, heart attack, um, trauma, or something like that, you could see an elevated AST, but a normal ALT. It's totally possible. Um, where they, they tend to be looked at together. So if you see a rise in both the AST and the ALT together, then that points to the liver more than anything, although the kidney could potentially also increase uh, both of them. And usually what you see is if you have something, um, so usually a form of hepatitis, um, whether it's a viral hepatitis, toxic hepatitis, um, or an autoimmune hepatitis, you're going to see a sharp climb in this AST and ALT values where you would see, you know, the values times uh, 10, 20, but even like time 100 and more. So uh, greatly increase AST, ALT um, together, both increase usually indicate hepatocellular damage. So the liver cells are being damaged and they are releasing those enzymes. And so that's where AST and ALT are very, very significant. Now, if you have a case study and your AST is elevated, but your ALT is normal and the AST is just a little bit elevated or it's not like crazy high, and your ALT is normal, that pretty much, I would say, rules out a liver source. You would be looking more, maybe more at a muscle or kidney source or something like that. So, um, again, both of them, if they're both elevated together, then it tends to indicate hepatocellular injury. Okay. So, yeah, they're both, um, you'll find them on the comprehensive metabolic panel and on uh, the liver function test. So, um, they are elevated in liver disease, as I said. Um, they reflect hepatocellular destruction, so like viral hepatitis, toxic hepatitis, autoimmune hepatitis, all of those. Um, and you usually can detect high le enzyme levels before patients have symptoms, which is really, really helpful. And so um, they use these off, often to monitor uh, damage that might be caused by drugs uh, that patients are taking. So they'll let, monitor those liver enzymes, and if they see the AST and LT starting to climb, then there might be iffy about the, the drug that whatever the patient's taking might be causing liver damage. Uh, again, AST and LT elevations together can be seen as much as 100 times the reference range, and then that is indicating, again, hepatitis, massive liver injury, some problem there going on. Again, ALT is greater specificity for liver disease than AST. Okay. Uh, and then your procedures, um, you can look at those. Uh, hemolysis should be avoided because um, AST especially is uh, contained in red cells, but ALT can be also. So anyway, um, if your sample is really hemolyzed, you could get falsely increased AST and um, some ALT falsely increased. Okay, your alkaline phosphatase is your other liver enzyme also pre present in the CMP and the liver function test. And it hydro, um, hydrolase, it's a hydrolase that releases inorganic phosphate from the substrate. And so this guy, uh, alkaline phosphatase is in the small intestine, kidneys, liver, bone, and placenta. 
Um, so again, part of the CMT, CMP, and it increases in alkaline phosphatase are seen in uh, obstructive hepatobiliary diseases. So it is not found in the he hepatocytes, it is found in the biliary tract. So when alkaline phosphatase is high, is you're looking, if you suspect liver issues, you're looking at the bowel tracts, maybe some bowel stones, gallstones, something like that. And they are also increased um, with uh, bone diseases and stuff. So any kind of osteoblast mediated disease, if you think of bone cancers and stuff like that. And being part of the placenta, you would um, see it also elevated in pregnant women. And that would be phys physiologically normal for it to be elevated because of the placenta. Um, and because it's related to bone, uh, you can also see increase in grown children. So this is probably what the next slide and go is seeing. So again, reference ranges for infants and children are higher because their bones are growing. And so they'll simply will have higher levels of alkaline phosphatase and your pregnancy because of the placenta elevates alkaline phosphatase. So these, that is expected. Uh, and But if they're not a child, not an infant, and they're not pregnant, and then have high alkaline phosphatase, then you could be looking at gallstones or biliary tract um, disease or problems. Uh, you do want to avoid hemolysis also, um, and uh, the heat inactivation can uh, help um, distinguish the source of the alkaline phosphatase from liver or bone. Uh, and so the GGT, gamma glutamyl transferase, so this guy is not part of a CMP or a liver function test, so it's usually ordered separately. Um, we're still untangling the exact functions of uh, GGT, but I mean, we know it has to do with uh, detoxification and stuff. So um, they are, the GGT enzyme is found on the cell surface and in the cytoplasm and um, when you measure GGT in the serum, it's primarily of hepatic origin, so it's coming from the liver. So um, a lot of liver disorders, because it's coming from the liver, can increase your GGT levels. Um, and, but they're the highest in patients to have metastatic uh, hepatocellular carcinoma or you know, have a metastatic liver cancer. So the biggest use of GGT here is going to be alcoholic cirrhosis or chronic alcoholics because the um, alcohol is a toxin and GGT helps detoxify. And so you'll see increased GGT activity and um, it will be increased in the blood. Um, another use for GGT um, is to distinguish, um, so see if the if you have an increased alkaline phosphatase, if it might be liver or bone. So if you're not sure um, and you want to see if, if this if there's something going on with the liver, you could measure your GGT level. So if um, if it's your origin is the liver, you will see high GGT and high alkaline phosphatase. If the origin is bone, then the GGT would be normal. So, but think about it uh, like a pregnant woman that has gallstones or a growing kid that has gallstones or something like that. So that could be helpful there. So anyway, quick review. I know you guys have been over this stuff already, but I thought I would just throw it in there to help you guys. Uh, thank you.